folks, Aaron Otter Creek Farm. I am on my way to do a uh, bush hawking job for somebody in the area and I'm all loaded up and I doubt I'm going to drop the tractor and trailer off today, which happens to be a Thursday and I'm going to come back on Saturday and actually do the work. So uh, I was up at the property doing some other things, you can probably tell. I kind of wear the same outfit, you know. Uh, I tend to wear the same clothes all the time because I get so dirty and nasty that uh, it's just easier if I destroy one set of clothing instead of multiple. So they do get washed, I promise. But uh, I'm gonna go drop the tractor off. It is a uh, land clearing job. He's got some trees. He wants some areas thinned out. Not too many palmetto bushes, which is nice. Probably about a day's worth of work. Uh, 75 bucks an hour. And Probably about 125 bucks in expenses uh, you know, between fuel and driving, and, you know, stuff like that. So you know, it won't be bad for you know, a day. Uh, it could stretch into two or three, just kind of depending on how far he wants to go with it. Uh, going to be thinning the trees in between. His wife, I guess, doesn't like to go back there. He's got a nice cleared area. But then in the tree line, he wants to thin it even further uh, so they can see into it. And I guess they've got guys on ATVs and such running around back in the property so they want to be able to see more of that too. So uh, just so you know, uh, I got this job just like most of them. If it's not word of mouth, the only other way that I'm picking up jobs is through uh, road signs. Just put the road signs around in the area that I want to do business, uh, not beyond that. And people in the area when they need Bushhagen have seen the signs. They've lasted fairly long. I've been surprised. Um, you know, so they're just picking up the phone and give me a call and say, hey, you want to go and do this? Talk about it a little bit on the phone. I look at it on the satellite map. And uh, and then what I'll do is I'll go out and look at it. So you really can't price it unless you understand what you're in for. So get that done, and I'll, I'll, I'll flip you around and get you some footage when we actually get on the property and uh, show you what we're looking at. There's one of my signs sitting on the side of the road. That's all it takes. So here we are. This is the property. Owner's building a house, but has cleared, I don't know, maybe two, three acres. And I'm going to drop it in the office said. I've got the tractor parked over there. And uh, going to be thinning that tree line. So backing in and working the tree lines and opening the trails and yeah, just trying to make it more visible underneath, I guess, so they're more comfortable. So that's what we're up to, and uh, I'll bring you back on Saturday when I come back and actually start doing the cutting. So now I just gotta get the trailer off and get out of here. You see me drop the cutter down to the ground. What I'm trying to do is not leave a stump for the customer. He's asking me about the stump situation. And certainly cutters leave stumps compared to a board culture with a cylinder head on it. So I wanted to try to take it down nice and close to the ground for one. And a lot of times you can just drop this thing straight down on the stump after you cut it and it'll grind it up and basically it disappears at that point. dust that you see here ended up being one of the challenges of this job. The dust is not only the dirt, but it's the palmetto leaves that have died and built up on the ground and it kind of comes along and stirs it all up. Massive hurts just a huge amount of air to run that 75-40 column motor, so it 
Optic gets bogged with dust through this Minecraft. I found that after I had been doing it for a while, I had to stop about every 30 minutes and at least wipe the grill off the engine cover. And then about every hour, I had to actually take out the engine to shake it out and uh, blow out the radiator to do that because it's so fine. Interesting, didn't foresee that coming, but less than hard. As you can see here, you know, back and right over Palmetto's is a pretty nice capability. If you live in Florida, you, you know and understand how tough those palmettos are. It's uh, the leaves are easy to cut, but the, the, this trunk on them is actually very fibrous and very hard to cut. The bottom of light doesn't actually you know, cut it down to the ground, but it will top them, especially with the blades in you. Uh, it does a nice job at really reducing them down much closer to the ground level. Palmetto piles that I was able to just basically throw it in reverse and back through the entire Palmetto stand um, until I got to the other side. So it's really nice to be able to do that. Very difficult to do with a traditional bush hog that has the back you know, lip on it. With the bomb of light, the tree bar is pushing the vegetation over and the blade is sticking out about three inches past the end. So it is cutting before the housing of the cutter actually gets there. So it's you know, loosening it taking it down as the cutter passes through so you don't have that resistance on the cutter because the vegetation is already cut by the time the housing actually gets to the point of vegetation, that makes sense. While cutting, I'm constantly adjusting the angle of the cutter by raising and lowering the rear end. I'm also adjusting the height of the cutter to get to the base of trees, to grind stumps down, to get over palmettos, to try to avoid things getting hung up on top of the cutter, things of that nature. It's actually physically demanding, and after a six, seven, or eight hour day, looking backwards, it's exhausting as well as you get bored from uh, being in that position so much and twisting your head and your back throughout the course of the day. So uh, just kind of be prepared for the physical nature of this type of work and what you're into. Ran into one little problem, the engine overheated because the uh, debris on the grill. So, uh, pretty interesting cut. Lots of mid-sized trees in that six to six to three inches, and lots of palmettos. But the bomb of lights just chewing the palmettos up. I'm even more impressed now with the bomb of light handling these palmettos. Uh, it just really eats them up. You know, obviously you can't cut the stump out of the ground, but it's ripping the cutting the tops off, making them look nice and neat for a while. So um, so far so good. I'm gonna spin you around, let you look out as we're gonna move to a slightly uh, different section, do some more cutting, and uh, I'll let you watch. Here we go. This is the area that I've been clearing. Okay, well, we've got pretty gear that helps. There we go. So this is all pretty thick, and I've been able to uh, get in there and work through this. A little dusty out there. But they just want to open it up so they can see more into the forest. They've got some people riding on their land and uh, they just want it more visible. So I'm definitely doing that. And it doesn't seem like they care 
what I take down. I think it's uh, the more trees, the better. So I'm going to uh, mount you on the glass and let you watch the cutter do its work. Here we go. So I just got the overheat signal and I can understand why there's no air getting the engine. So obviously I need to uh, do some quick maintenance. What's that? No. No, it'll be all right. 